Welcome to the studio, Froil here. I can't wait to show you these fabulous collage techniques. You're going to love this. Right, so a few weeks ago, I made an episode using image transfers on the gel plate and I was playing with these fabulous images from my Sydney adventures. Yay! So fun! Uh, some of the image transfers didn't work and I had an epiphany of what the problem was and that episode will definitely help you fix your issues if you're having some problems uh, printing image transfers on the gel plate. Now, the ones that turned out are fabulous. Look at this one. I pulled it to clean the plate. And this one is an image transfer of this particular image. Yay! When they work, they're absolutely awesome. And they make the most incredible collage materials. I just love it. This one also came from one of these images. Look how amazing the prints made. They're so interesting, so textural. So, you know, it really is worth your time and effort to work out how to do this technique because it's so much fun. So we're making a collage today. And this one was actually one of the ones that didn't work. The paint was absorbed into the paper. It didn't leave an impression on the plate and it didn't take a print. But I'm thinking I could actually use this paper in the collage today because, you know, I kind of like the colour and the pattern's really good. This pattern is the tile of the Sydney Opera House and it is fabulous. It was so much fun taking those images and making gel prints out of them. So I have a whole heap of papers to use. I also have some that didn't quite pull off the plate really well, but I just love them. Look at these images. Don't get stressed out if your prints tear and you're pulling them or if the papers don't work exactly how you want because when you're making collage, it really doesn't matter. You're going to tear them up anyway. And then I've got these ones as well. These are the pattern of the tile of the Queen Victoria building and baby, she's glorious. I'm telling you, takes an incredible image transfer. I just love these patterns. I was experimenting with white on the plate and it worked really well. Now, if you are in my Patreon community, you will find a file with these images that I've used to make these transfers and you can collate yourself a beautiful collage as well. And I would love to see what you do. Remember, you can always show me in my Facebook group. Don't forget to answer the two admin questions so I know that you're a human. Yay! So we have lots to work with today. I might even use some of my digital collage papers. This is the black, white and red pack. I think I could put some of these with these graphic images of the buildings. I think that compositionally that could work very well and could be really interesting. So, yes. Way too many papers for my one piece of watercolour. <laughs> so today I'm going to be putting my collage onto this piece of watercolour paper because I found it behind my door in the studio and I really think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm absolutely loving the size. Now the size is because I know I get asked these questions, 23 inches or 59 centimetres by 16 and a half inches or 42 centimetres. So that's the size I'm working on today. It is a 300 gram watercolour paper. I think it definitely looks like it's a rough. And I'm going to use this because I just feel like doing something bigger than my art journal. And I'm really loving this idea. It's always good to use what you find behind the door in your studio. <laughs> Now, this piece of paper is a handmade paper that I picked up from this little art shop that I walked past when I was in Sydney. It was fabulous. We were having such a good day. But how could you walk past the art shop? I don't think so. And they were out the front and they called to me. So I had to get these beautiful handmade papers. Oh, look, it got a bit dingled in my suitcase on the way home, not to worry. But I think that this would work well with these colours and these tones that I have today. And we'll see where we head. 
Now, the thing is, where do you start when you have so many incredible options? Sometimes that can actually be overwhelming. I'm thinking I'm going to start with this piece because, I don't know, I'm just loving it. I'm loving it this way. I love the way we have the semicircle and then the strong angle of the triangle there. I think I'll definitely start with this. This is also going to set the um, tone of my collage today because it's in that strong red color. Yes, we're going to be using warm tones, maybe a few neutrals and definitely some bronzes. We can add black and white for a little bit of drama. Now, I have way more papers than what can fit on this watercolor sheet, clearly. But I'm not too worried because I don't know exactly. I haven't laid it all out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just know the kind of feeling I want to create with these fabulous prints taken from the glorious buildings and the graphics of those lines and architecture. So it's an intuitive collage. I'm pretty much going to just make it up as I go along. And if it doesn't work or I'm not happy, I'll just keep creating until I am happy. So it will end up quite layered. And I'm going to use my favorite matte medium to lay these papers down. Now, I could use some of these images. These print copies are the ones that didn't work for my transfers. So annoying. Um, I could use some of these in the collage. I'm pretty tempted. Maybe I might. But we'll see how we go. But the first thing I am going to do is stick this piece down because I've decided, yes, I'm loving it and it's going to go. It's going to go in the middle because that's very brave. <laughs> I think that's very brave because I've got no idea where I'm heading with this. And the one thing that we really do need when creating a collage like this is courage. <laughs> so... Don't fear when you start your collage, just pick up something that has inspired you and put it down because you can always change it. You can rearrange it, you can paint over it, you can cover it with more collage. It doesn't have to stay the same way as when you start. It doesn't have to be that way when you finish. In fact, mine never are. I always change things as I go along, but I like to at least start with something that's inspired me. So my inspiration today is this circle and the triangle. I just love that. I want to increase that kind of shape in the collage and see where we might head. Yay, first piece down. See, it's not even scary. You just got to do it. Now, I might put maybe one of my digital collage papers down this is not necessarily going to be seen at the end, but I like the way when you put a good background down, you can have little pieces peeking through. That works really well. These colors are going to work and the best collage are a collection of layers. So if you start with something, it won't necessarily be there in the end, but it will help you to make the decisions for the next layer. So I seem to be starting in the center and working out. <laughs> Remember, I said I don't have a plan. I haven't planned all this out. We're just going to make it up as we go along because I really enjoy that. I enjoy the creativity of spontaneity and it just makes me happy. So there you go. That's the whole reason why I am approaching the collage this way. How good does that digital collage paper look? Fabulous. Now, I always get my prints done as laser prints from the office stationery or a different office shop, depending on where I want to go to. I don't have a laser printer myself and the colors come up so much better, stronger and more reliable with a laser print. Also, these laser prints handle my matte medium, which I like to plaster over everything. It just works better for me. So that's what I like to do. Right. What's the next piece? You know, I'm really liking the color of this. This is a Payne's Gray. It was supposed to be an image transfer, but it didn't work. The paper absorbed all the paint instead of transferring the image. So I'm loving this color and I think I'm gonna put a piece of it down here. Do I want it to go that way? You know, I might, or do I want it to go that way? That's the question. 
I think I'm going to go up this way because I like the way it's kind of contrasting with that line and direction. And I think that just makes it more interesting. So I'm going to put a piece of that right here. So my first tip of composition when creating collage is to pick a starting point. Now I've started in the middle and I'm going to spread my papers out around that way because you want to cover your background first. Then you can decide how you want things to go on top of it. The second tip is start with your biggest pieces. See how I'm filling the space? I'm filling the background of this collage on the watercolor paper with big pieces. So in that way, you actually are laying down colors. You're starting to establish your composition. And as you go along and build layers on your collage, the pieces can get smaller and smaller and smaller. They can also get more transparent or they can be more textured. So first of all, you want to set the direction of which way you're going. I'm going from the middle out. And then you want to use your biggest pieces first to cover your background. And that is a fabulous way to start your collage. Right, that beautiful piece is down. I like the way the lines are going up that way and these lines are going that way. It's just more interesting. So that leads into my next point. Make sure your pieces that you're putting down um, on your background are varied. You don't want to have all the same. You want to have different directions of textures so that it's going to make your composition more interesting. Now, this can change along the way. There's really not any hard and fast rules. I'm just going to share with you my process of how I create collage like this, because really there's so many ways to approach this kind of application that you really can't get it wrong. <laughs> so don't stress out if you don't want to do it like this. You can do it the way you like to do it best. I'm just sharing with you the way I like to do it. I think it could be really interesting adding one of these images into the collage. So I'm going to put this one up here. I think I might cut it and fit it around this piece because that could, that just sounds like fun. What do you think? I reckon that's a cool idea. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> now, like I said, it may not stay this way. Uh, as I put layers on top of the collage, uh, things get changed, things disappear. So <laughs> we'll see what happens in the end. But at the moment, I'm liking this idea. And that's the thing. You just have to keep taking the next step and keep moving and deciding and don't get stressed out or stuck in any one spot. Just keep trying your ideas, and if they don't work, you can fix it. So I'm liking this up here. Maybe I'll put it in the corner. And do I want to cut that out? No, I don't. I'm leaving it. All right, I'm going to put that one right there. I just love this kind of application with collage because there's such an excitement in the process of making it, of making the decisions and that creative energy of putting it together. To have something at the end of a few hours that's been created from nothing. I just love that. So, you know, you really have to. You have to join me in this because truly, it's the best thing. <laughs> Creating art is the best. Right, so that's going to go there. I'm liking that there. And now is the next decision. You see, it's one decision after the next and then... You look up and suddenly the whole thing will be covered. The next composition tip is repetition. Now I've put that piece up there, which I love. This is one of the image transfer gel prints that actually worked from my beautiful Opera House tiles. And I like the fact that it's repeating that tile pattern that's down here. It's in a different direction. That goes up, that goes across. So that's working really well. That's kind of a strong compositional element there. So you want to repeat elements in your composition because it just gives it more of a flow. 
and a rhythm and I'm going to add a piece of this because that is similar to that piece and it'll work really well. So you want to use some repetition. You want to use maybe the same colors or the same shapes or the same particular pieces of paper in a couple of places of your collage because it just really contributes to the composition if you see the same thing in a few places. So I'm going to put a piece in there. I just can't decide <laughs> which part of the piece I like because I like so much of it. <laughs> I never said the decisions were easy. I just said you had to make them. <laughs> So I think there, you know, I'm thinking that's going to work. I'm going to put that there. So this piece of paper here is a jelly print image transfer of that exact photo, which I think is really cool. And it's repeating the shapes. This piece here is taken from the same pack of digital collage papers as this piece here. So it's the same kind of elements and textures. And this piece up here is exactly the same pattern as this piece. This was the failed jelly print image transfer and that was a successful one. So repeating the shapes around your collage just creates a real harmonious flow. Also, this piece down here is a jelly print of this one up here as well. Yeah, forgot about that one. <laughs> I actually chose this piece because it was the same kind of color and texture as this one here. The repetition of the shapes, colors and textures gives your collage a stronger composition because it will have a rhythm. The rhythm's created by looking and seeing the same pattern in different areas and your eye kind of follows it around the composition. Right, so what are we doing next? I've got some gaps here and here, but other than that, we've pretty much got the background sorted. What are we going to use for some beautiful layers and highlights and all the fun stuff? I'm really liking this print here. I think the color's working and I just love the lines and textures. I think I might just put that there before I think about what I wanna do next. And that could look really, really cool. Yay. It's also going to repeat. I know, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but it's also going to repeat the circle shape in here from up in that corner is down here. So it's connecting the collage together. <laughs> I don't want to be repetitive, but repetition is a really good element in your collage. <laughs> especially when it's an abstract. So I'm entirely focused on the abstract qualities of the shapes and lines and the way they're intersecting. And I absolutely love abstract art. This is so fun to me. This jelly print was actually a cleanup sheet. I know, right? I love cleanup sheets. They just, because you're not worrying about trying to make the print perfect. And you're just trying to get the excess paint off the plate. And sometimes when, you know, you're not stressing about it so much, it can turn out absolutely amazing. I think that looks pretty cool. So what are we doing next to create some beautiful layering on top? Well, I really like these torn pieces. It's stuck on the plate, but I think they got some great shape to it. That, of course, is this image here as a transfer, and I'm loving it. I like the strong contrast of the black. I think I might put it in some places. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, and I want it to be on top, so it's going to have to go on last. But I'm thinking maybe up there and maybe there. That cool bit. Now, I need something for the middle here because that's a strong focal point and there's nothing there. So we have to decide what are we going to put for our focal point in the middle. So I might need to pull out some other papers. So we need a focal point. Now that's another compositional secret. 
<laughs> we have to have a focal point. What's it going to be? Are we going to go with a circle? You know I love circles. Or are we going to go with something more lined or patterned or angular or rectangle or square? Possibilities are endless. We just have to keep going and see how this collage develops. You know, I'm very tempted to put some of this image in. I really like it. Do I want the circle? Of course I do. But, you know, I'm going to go with something different. What about we cut that section out of this image? I think the colours are working. The kind of, you know, more earthy tones are working with my fabulous bronzes and warm tones. So let's try this section. So here it is. I'm thinking on this side of the collage, maybe not all of it, maybe just some of it. You know, I'm thinking like that. That looks pretty cool. What do you think? The colour's working. This colour's working with this colour. I'm liking that. The graphic lines are working. That's mirroring that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put that there. Right. What's next then? I really want to use some of this paper. I just love it. It's so beautiful and textural. But you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to maybe put some lines in it. So maybe we'll put a stencil on it first and then put it in. And I might put it in a few places. What about we spray it? And that would really suit the feel of the collage that we're developing. Yep, okay. We're going to spray or stencil onto this paper. Right, now this is a Liquitex. It's an acrylic spray paint, so you can mix it with your acrylic paint. It's fantastic. I've used it before. And I will put in a link in the description of my other video where I was giving it a full road test. <laughs> so you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. It is an acrylic paint and it is low odour, but it's still a spray paint. So, you know, you got to look after your health. Now, I'm going to spray some numbers because I think that's what I want. I'm not sure. I'm going to cover the stencil in the areas I don't want to spray it. And I have it on my fabulous paper packaging because you get it free and it makes a fabulous background paper. Right. Give it a good shake. You want to try and hold it still. It's not sitting perfectly flat. So it will get a fuzzy edge and that's okay. I'm okay with that. You just want to cover up any areas that you don't want spray because the overspray is pretty huge and it goes like, you know, everywhere. But it is cool. It's got a great effect and I really like using it. I also like to use that paint that's on there. I turn that over usually putting it on the paper packaging that I'm using to surround my spray because it does print up really cool. Look how cool that looks and that will be used in a different collage. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. I might just do a little bit more and I might pull out the bronze and maybe spray some in the bronze because I'm not sure what I want and I like to have options. <laughs> So this is the antique gold. Of course, I've got a gold version. Why would I not? And this stencil is a Kari Gibson stencil. I'll put the link in the description if you want to find it because it's pretty cool. I'm liking these marks. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. I'm liking that gold. Now I've just got to decide if I'm going to use the gold or the black. You know, so many decisions. Look at that. Look at the overspray, man. That's fantastic. Maybe I'll just use that. <laughs> oh, man. I might just do a little bit more. <laughs> so now I have fabulous options. I can use the glorious piece that I stenciled. I've also got this beautiful looking overspray with the letters back to front. And I've got some of this overspray print as well i know right love using paper packaging for prints and collage because hello free resources just saying i think i want to put some of the beautiful antique gold on i'm going to use 
either the numbers or the letters haven't decided but i think we'll put some of this on first and head in this direction what about we add some of this here yes absolutely that looks fabulous what i love about using these um spray paints is they dry really fast so you can spray something and pretty much use it within like a few minutes fantastic because you know you don't want to be waiting <laughs> I, don't, I don't like waiting so that works really well especially if it's a spontaneous idea and you just want to get on and keep making it and now we're getting some more textual elements onto the beautiful collage right so where's the next piece going to go that's the question i think i'd like to add something transparent around here so i'm just going to have a rummage through my drawers and see what i can find now i've got this piece of tissue this is just an ink that i've brushed onto white tissue when i've been playing around actually if you want to know my secret this will be the pastry brush that I love to use. <laughs> I absolutely love it, especially when you're just doing experimental mark making like this is. So I'm thinking I'd like to use maybe the circle or the crosses. Actually, the crosses look really cool, don't they? Let's put them on. I love all the splatters of the ink. This is recycled white tissue because i can see that it's got a bit of sticky tape on it so <laughs> i know that that's been recycled fabulous let's just rip it into a random shape and then i'm figuring we're putting it here and now we're starting towards building our focal point and that's going to work really well right so they are down and I made a commitment and stuck down these black pieces as well. I just loved them. I really do want these numbers. Look at the fuzzy way that it does that with the spray because the stencil wasn't totally flat. I like that. I think it looks cool. Anyway, I think I'm going to go with my original plan, which was to have the numbers. Very happy with the letters. I'll probably use them another day. I may even use some more of the antique gold because it's such a great colour. A lovely strong contrast. Maybe there like that. Now, if I put it on that edge, that's a thing also about me, particularly when I make um, compositional decisions with my collages. Uh, where there's a hard, strong edge like that, I like to cover it. So I would probably put this along that edge because it's going to soften that hardness. Do I want that point or is it okay if I cover that point? So you've got to make those decisions about your composition as you go along. I'm going to leave that point because I like it. I think it's a nice strong line there. It covers up that cross shape, but that's okay. I can live with that. You really just have to decide what you personally like. And that's the thing. Don't get too strung out about is it right or is it wrong? I mean, do you like it? Is it your creative expression? Because that's what's really important. It won't be the same as everybody else's. You might not even like what I'm doing here. But that's okay because this is my collage and I love it. <laughs> so just remember that when you're creating yours, um, don't get so strung out so much on the rules. Do you like it or do you not like it? And let that be your guide. Sometimes it's great to think about, you know, the different aspects of compositions and design. And sure, that comes into play absolutely. But if you trust yourself and create intuitively, you do get better just over time. Because I'm telling you, you have to make art to create great art. You just have to do it. It's mileage under the brush and you will get better. You will make these choices and you'll get better with the choices you make and you will intuitively know how something should feel and if it's balanced and if there's enough rhythm and if the composition's right. And baby, that is just a way more fun way to create. Yay! So I'm thinking that's going there. And pretty much now that's become my focal point. It's a little off center, which I like. I'm a little off center and I'm pretty happy with that. 
What else do I want to add to it? Well, you know, I could just continuously keep going, but I may not. I'm really liking how it's looking and feeling. I pulled out some of these uh, circle shapes because these this was what I was making when I was in my paper making frenzy. And I was doing beehive inspired shapes. They look fabulous. These ones have had that particular coating of the matte medium on them. Um, I'll add that video underneath if you want to have a look at that. It's pretty cool. Just saying. I don't mind this one. It's been a little beat up and it's got holes in it, but that's okay. I don't mind the section. There's a couple of different sections. That'll be cool. I'm liking that. Righto. See how much stronger the composition's becoming by putting those additional layers on top. Loving that. That's working really well. And I just want to add something over here. Maybe I can see if I can find a little bit of gossamer paper. I think I've got a tiny, weeny bit of black left. So my fourth compositional secret. Am I up to four? <laughs> I can't even remember what number I'm up to. Um, is to trust yourself. Just trust yourself. Go with your intuition on how you think something's feeling. And allow yourself to create because I'm telling you, it makes the best art. That is looking fabulous. I'm loving it. So <clears throat> I'm thinking I want a bit more of the bronze, maybe over here somewhere. Because this fabulous antique gold color looks awesome. And I want to repeat, of course. <laughs> there's my favorite word again uh, a section of it over here so i'm thinking see how these lines here are kind of blocky and harsh i'm thinking we cover those with a piece like that and i'd like to connect it with that piece i am all about connection so we connect it with that piece we cover those harsh lines Yes, and it brings your eye over to there with another piece of that. Loving it. That's working. I think I'd also like to add some of this. There's a little slither of offcut floating around on my desk here, which I cut off this piece here. I'm going to add this, I think, up here so it takes that color. And I want to put it right on that line. And it takes that color up there. Yeah, I like that. Just a little bit wider, like that. Righto. Now, I'm thinking, how about a little bit of gossamer? I've got this tiny piece left. This is paper. Seriously, I know. It looks like fabric, but it's paper. And I'm thinking maybe over this section, somewhere there. That could be cool. I'm loving all the juxtaposition of layers and shapes and angles and patterns. It's looking fabulous. And I'm thinking I want to add a couple of the circles up there because then it's connecting that. I know. What can I say? I like connections. <laughs> I like things being connected. <laughs> I just do. And it's better for the composition. Right, so that's going to go up like that. That's fabulous. Loving it, loving it. Are we done? You know, we're pretty close. I'm loving all the different sections. I'm loving that. That stands out nice and strong in our focal area. What else do we want to add? I don't know, man. Should we just leave it alone? You know, I think I am pretty happy with it. I just would like, I think some more numbers to go along this side just so it brings those numbers over to here i'm thinking something along the lines of these ones and then i'm pretty well happy with the whole thing what do you think what do you think what do you think i think that those numbers there look fabulous they look so fabulous. I'm just going to add one more. 
<laughs> just one more. I want to put them there. And then I'm done. I promise I'm backing away from the paper. <laughs> just one more. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at that. That looks fabulous. I'm loving it. Yes, I'm letting it go now. I'm putting my brush down and I'm backing away. <laughs> I just had to add that little bit to connect those pieces there. And then we've got that kind of happening there. And it's looking really cool. I'm very happy with it. Yay! So much fun. So what do you think? What do you think about my fabulous abstract collage? What did you think about my decisions? Would you have made the same ones? I'd love to see what you're creating. So don't forget to join me in my private Facebook group. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button and like the video so that you can catch up with all of the ones that will be coming up next. Thanks for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. <laughs> so if you want more info about anything, the links will be in the description under the video and have a look there. See you next week.